Solutions Lab uh, video three, and we are going to look at the data and then just some of the processing that data from the data table. Okay, remember in part two, we did our observations of what we saw in our experiment and we were able to see the procedure. Uh, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna weigh this product of copper hydroxide. So you can kind of see it right here. And this has only sat out for maybe a couple hours. It'll be sitting out over a weekend. So it's gonna be more like 72 hours when you weigh it. And it will get, it'll look smaller and smaller as the water evaporates from it. Um, it's going to weigh more than the filter paper um, because there is some mass, there's some particles of copper hydroxide there. And here is some sample data with that. So the mass of the filter paper plus copper hydroxide, 1.85 the mass of the dry unused filter paper 1.29 and the difference of that would be your mass of your copper hydroxide. So that is the amount of precipitate you would have experimentally. Okay, just going to these questions here in analysis, maybe a hint for this number one would be, we have, we're trying to find a theoretical mass of copper hydroxide. Okay, so if everything reacted, we can collect everything that we have. Well, based on the 30 milliliters of 0.50 molar NaOH, I look at this and I know 30 milliliters is 0 0.0300 liters. If I know the molarity, I should be able to convert that to moles of NaOH. And then if I have a balanced equation, I know the mole ratio between NaOH and COH2, so I should be able to get to moles of CuOH2. And if I know the moles of CuH2 and I know the molar mass of CuOH2, which I can get from a periodic table, I should be able to get the grams of CuOH2. So that's what I'm expecting to get um, in theory based on this amount of sodium hydroxide. You're gonna do that same type of reasoning except coming from the 15 milliliters of 0.5 molar copper nitrate and figuring out the theoretical yield for copper hydroxide. And due to the ratios in the equation, the answers for one and two should be the same. That is your theoretical yield. There's a question about that that you need to think about there and respond to. And then in question four, it says calculate the percent yield of your reaction. And it's experimental over the theoretical. So the theoretical is your answers to number one and two. Your experimental is your answer to um, right here from your data table. So you're gonna do that, figure out your percent yield. And then you're in your conclusion, you're going to think, okay, is my percent yield less than or greater than 100%? And what type of errors or errors would correspond with that? So you need to think, okay, is there still water remaining in it? Is there impurities? Or did I lose some in the process? Did some drip through the filter paper? Did some say stuck on the bottom of the beaker right here? So you're gonna to have to think about things that would match up um, to what would be your percent yield and really just come up with one um, and talk about how it matches up to your percent yield. Our percent yield was less than 100% because, okay, or our percent yield was greater than 100% because, so you're giving a reason for that. And I believe that would be it for the experiment. So uh, that is a hint for part three and processing that data. Thanks for watching.